a centennial story from the Portland Clinic. Portland in the 1920s, with things changing fast. The Roaring Twenties might be more accurately called the tweener decade, as Portlanders, like most Americans, were caught between their old ways of doing things and modern advances. We had just come out of the war, uh, World War I, of course. Uh, Portland was growing. Uh, the economy was, was strong here. Major manufacturing during the war had occurred here, and the economy kept on, on going. Lifestyles in transition. Major innovations such as air travel and commercial radio not only signaled change, but pushed aside traditional culture. The family farm left behind, traded for life in the city. For the first time, more than half of Oregon's residents lived in urban areas, among millions of Americans who headed to town and stayed. The population of Portland had tripled uh, from 1890 to the 19, 1920s, from 90,000 to over 250,000. So there's a great deal of excitement going on here in Portland at the time. Excitement like that experienced by first-time car owners. The number of licensed vehicles in Oregon nearly doubling over the decade. Driving laws enacted. The speed limit, 25 miles an hour. By the end of the decade, one in five Portlanders would own a car. So this was when the, when the automobile took off. Movie theaters came to Portland for the first time in major numbers. Such that for the first time, more Portlanders were going to the movies on Sunday then we're going to church. Portland growing to be the 24th largest city in the U.S., connecting with the rest of the country through its commercial radio stations, securing land on Swan Island for an airport in 1921, opening Multnomah Stadium for the Oregon-Washington College football game in 1926. With ratification of the 19th Amendment in 1920, women won the right to vote. Medical care was also about to take a major step forward. Portland already had its first hospitals where patients went if seriously ill, but most doctors were generalists who didn't have offices and who showed up when called at your front door. There were home visits uh, back then, of course, especially more out towards the rural Portland areas. Uh, those, those were still like, part of the number one visit with the doctor was the doctor coming to your home. That would change, thanks mainly to a surgeon named Thomas Joyce. Dr. Joyce had completed three years of surgical training at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, working with the renowned young surgeons Charles and William Mayo. The Mayo brothers were the first to form an integrated group practice with a teamwork approach to medical care, a concept Dr. Joyce embraced. In 1921, he formed a partnership with three other physicians and the Portland Clinic, Oregon's first private, multi-specialty medical group, opened to serve patients in a downtown Portland office building. It was time to get modernized and time for something like the Portland Clinic to bring us into the, you know, what we became the modern 20th century. In time, with hundreds of doctors and medical and administrative staff members, the Portland Clinic would care for thousands of Northwest families, expanding to seven branch locations and introducing such innovations as centralized scheduling and the state's first day surgery centers. In fact, it wasn't long after its start in 1921 that the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota began referring West Coast patients to the new clinic in Oregon. That's still happening a century later as the story of advancing modern medical care continues at the Portland Clinic. <laughs>